Okay, here's Austin back. I'm just going to show you how I wired in the uh, wideband O2 sensor into my first gen. Um, what I ended up running was an Innovate MTXL. Um, looked like it had pretty good reviews, and I know that it can communicate with some aftermarket ECUs that I might eventually want to run if I go back to EFI or a turbo, and both. Um, so, what I did here was I took the auto clock out of the center hole in the uh, first gen S3 gauge surround or um, the uh, stereo surround and so it fits just about perfectly with a 52 millimeter gauge which is about two and a sixteenth inch you kind of have to hollow it out a little bit with a Dremel but if you look on the back it actually fits in there pretty freaking nice so let's try to get some decent focus on here so because of this, um, it can actually sit where that clock sits in the uh, car as well. So what I did is I wired it into what the clock originally ran on with some old male connectors that I have from an old wiring harness. So positive switched, and then I got my ground and my white going the same thing because I don't want to connect to the headlight switch then you can't run the white on a dimmer uh, it'll dim it'll cause um, the gauge to malfunction due to um, <clears throat> the frequency coming from the dimmer so they say to ground it if you're not going to use it and then it'll just be bright all the time which I don't mind the other two are for signal cables and then you got the one that actually goes to the sensor here and then there's uh, two more small cables back here that are also for uh, I think it's for daisy chaining and for sending it out to uh, the ECU. So I'll put this in the car and kind of show you where the wiring goes and then uh, I can show you how it actually sits in there with the stereo that I just installed yesterday as well. Alright, here we've got the uh, wideband wired in and the stereo. Basically the wiring that I did was I ran both the grounds to this pin right here with the auto clock. Um, the auto clock is supposed to have a switched ignition source as well, but I can't get it to work properly. I don't know if my fuse is blown or what. So I ended up running the positive 12 volt switched wire to the same wire that I did the uh, stereo in. So <clears throat> when I turn the key on, they both work. Uh, here, I'll test it and show you kind of what it's going to look like. So I got them both running. Um, the wiring isn't terrible as long as you can find that six pin connector on the back that's originally for the uh, stock stereo in these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all back together, um, get it all situated, and I'll show you kind of what the final product looks like when it's all said and done.